Oh my god, one try. 7k Dreamer, please. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be about the latest change in Seven Nights and that is the equipment stamping system. Now before we talk about anything, be sure to give this video a like because it contains tons of information and also subscribe to the channel to make my day feel better. So just to go through the basics about the new system, if you are familiar with typical JRPGs or you play other gacha games, the concept of equipment sets will not be unfamiliar to you. The idea is simple, basically you get 3 or 6 items that belong to the same set and put them together to give your character new buffs. There are currently 12 new sets launched, 6 are pretty average and they are called the old sets, while the other 6 are better versions of the average ones. We have the initiate set, which increases skill use chance and also reset awakening gauges for that hero one time. It is still uncertain if this will stack with reset awakening gauge accessories, but one thing for sure, this will be an incredibly amazing set for heroes like Fi, Eve, Chris, Anti, and Judas. The ambush set raises accuracy rate and allows the hero to have one more turn of buff duration reduction. This is only useful on heroes with buff duration reduction themselves like Colt, Millia, Anti, Rudy, Dylan's. In fact, it could be good for Dylan since he hits multiple targets, so the accuracy buff will definitely be useful. But that said, it is probably the worst set among the 6 types. The next two sets are damage reduction sets and they specifically reduce damage against two different types of skill effects. The fortune set reduces 40% damage from additional effects that deal damage proportional to defense, which directly refers to the offset defense mechanic, which we see from heroes like Fenra, Rin, Ukong, Eve, Colt, Ragrid, and Gerard. The Patient set reduces 40% damage from additional effects that deal damage proportional to HP, and some examples of this will include skills from Trude, Judas, Reginlaith. So obviously until more heroes deal additional damage based on max HP, the Patient set is unfortunately not very useful at the moment. The last two sets are the strongest sets, and they are the Blessing and Storm set. The Blessing set boosts any hero's attack by 2000 points which is insane and also gives the hero a 40% reflex, which is crazy. Even the old stamp Blessing set is pretty decent too. This is the most usable set for a variety of heroes but mainly you will want to give this to your DPS and glass cannons and immortal heroes as well. Imagine letting them take a huge ton of damage and also reflecting that back. So great heroes will include Cult, Dylan's, Skull, Rin, Fenra, Fi, Judas, and many more. The Storm set is a must have for all attack leaders and counter heroes simply because it is incredibly strong. The regular stem provides double the rates of the old stem. The heroes who will benefit from this greatly will include Yon, He, Dylan's, Gerard, Abel, and Chris. So, how do you stamp your equipment? You will need 20 Celestial Essences which can be obtained from Territory 15 and also need 100,000 gold which is very cheap. Pick the piece of equipment you want to stamp and click the button. In my first stamp, I actually managed to get the Storm stamp for my Yonhi Speed Weapon which was the most perfect situation ever. Stamping is 100% successful but the result of the stamp is random. So if you are unsatisfied with the result, you can re-stamp the same piece of gear with the same amount of resources. So 3 questions which you may have. Number 1. Is it worth it to re-stamp equipment or should I stamp a new piece of equipment? I think this question is extremely important to be answered and I would say it depends on the gear and set you are aiming for. Take for example a piece of speed weapon. If you fail to get the storm stem on it, are you going to make a new speed weapon just to try again? Thing is you do not need that many speed weapons, so making a new one may be a waste of resources and it is more logical to re-stem that speed weapon. But the same cannot be said about crit and lethal weapons and armor because you are more likely to have far more copies of these items than speed weapons. So if you fail to get the set you want for any of these, you can still try your luck by stamping on a new piece and you may end up having a variety of stamps for you to mix and match easily. So number two, 
how can you get 6 pieces of a set since there are only 4 item slots? You can also stamp jewels. And then you may ask, is it better to stamp items or jewels? I think to answer this, it goes back to the basis of what has more variety. For items, it is more limited. We only have 3 main weapon substats and 3 main armor substats that any hero can use. And we also know that weapons and armor tend to be used in pairs. So you can be certain if you want to swap equipment sets to different heroes, the effect will be present. However, the variety of jewels are just plenty and different heroes use different combinations of jewels. You can never be sure that there will be a fixed combination of jewels, especially when myth substats come into play, you know, that can be swapped around easily. So jewel stamping should really be left to the end after you have nailed down the core item set. So number three, must you definitely aim for a set of six? Or can you do a three-piece and three-piece setup? Well, this definitely depends on the hero you are talking about. You know, for PvP heroes, going for a full 6-piece buff should be the preferred goal since the 6-piece effects are amazing for PvP. But for PvE heroes, you could be more flexible. Like a DPS like Velika can be given a 3-piece Blessing buff of 2000 magic attack and a 3-piece Storm buff for basic attack plus 100% since she has guaranteed effect attack anyway. Same for Mei as well, but since Mei doesn't have guaranteed effect attack, you can also use a full storm set for her. Now we're going to talk about the most important thing, farming for Celestial Essence. So this was reviewed after testing on my live stream. So what we can confirm is that it is faster to farm in 15.5 than 15.10, even though 15.10 has far lesser enemies. The main reason is because Freya in 1510 can survive on 1 HP and that's a complete time waster. 151 is a possible map to farm in if you do not want soul shards to drop and I have taken the effort to try that as well. However, the 4 star Noah here has a 10% chance to evade so you do have to give your Abel or Yonhi accuracy rate increase traits. Other maps are strictly not recommended because there are heroes who have 1 HP survival like Noah, Mist and Bylock. There are two possible farmers for Territory 15 and they are Awaken Yonhee and Abel. I will talk about Yonhee first since she is our farming queen after all. After using her in a few rounds in 15-5, I think she is definitely usable. So let's look at the skill queue. The first two phases are exactly how you would farm in 4-5 and 8-20. Prepare a bottom skill just in case she doesn't use 2 speed attacks. Entering the second phase, she will use her third attack, causing the boom effect to kill everyone. If your Yonhi doesn't have good gear, she may not kill Velika, and this could lead to longer and more inconsistent runs. So in the third phase, I simply queue for her AoE to finish things off because if you don't, she will not use her speed attack unless all the fodders are dead. So don't worry if your fodder dies because they will still gain experience and grow in level so you can still get rubies. The fodder drop in territory 15 is actually pretty decent and you can accumulate tons of 3 star, 4 star and even 5 star fodders. If you couple your farming here with farming in 4-5 and 5-5 as usual, then you can potentially get tons of fusion pairs. Now let's look at Abel. Is he a better farmer? So just a disclaimer, no matter who you use here, there will always be some screw-ups due to bad RNG. The problem with Yonhee was that her damage may be questionable if you do not gear her well. The problem with Abel is that you have to rely on his speed attacks completely for smooth runs. But that said, he is an amazing farmer here as well. You know, for the first phase, he will kill all with one speed attack since he hits three targets. In the second phase, you have to hope he uses two speed attacks. If he doesn't, the enemy will proceed to use their skills. And if your fathers do not die, your fathers will proceed to use their speed attacks. 
So if all is good, Abel will use two speed attacks to kill everyone and you will enter the third phase where an enemy will use a skill. After the enemy uses his skill, Abel will follow up with a speed attack and kill off everyone. So let's talk about the gear. Take note that Awaken Yonhi, even at level 50 plus 10, still has lower magic attack than a level 44 plus 10 mythical Awaken Abel. So I will use Yonhi to show you the minimum setup, and I will show Abel later with the maximum setup. Take note that this setup can apply to both Yonhi and Abel. So for weapons, you will want double mythical awakened PvE speed in order to boost the basic attack damage. It is best if your polishing is as high as possible, especially for basic attack damage. Armor preferred will be counter so that they will have a chance to kill the enemies even if things go wrong. For jewels, the most basic I have tried is using a PvE revolutionary jewel for physical attack and magic attack, and then um, also the boss jewels that boost crit rate and lethal rate. For accessories, my Yonhi was actually using Death CC, and I have also tried the Isabella's Evil Eye at uh, level 5 with Abel too. It all works fine. You should opt for any accessory that helps to boost damage at the bare minimal. Now as for traits, if you can afford, definitely go with damage boosting traits as well, or simply raising your hero's crit and lethal rate. Now for the more advanced setup that will guarantee kills, it all comes down to the jewels and accessory. For the jewels, you can opt for effect attack chance increase if you use Able. You can use Fallout basic attack damage increase. You can use Dark Knight crit and lethal rate jewel. You can use PvE crit and lethal damage as well. If you can mythical awaken a PvE jewel, you can also get this combination of attack and basic attack damage. For accessories, the best option has got to be the level 5 Isabella's Illusion, allowing you to attack twice on basic attack. This makes your damage output far more stable because sometimes you may just need that extra damage in case your attacks get blocked. Now there is actually one farmer which could be better than Mythic Awaken Abel and he is Awaken Abel. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not able to test this but the reason I say this is because Awaken Abel also hits 3 targets with his basic attack but he does not have any effect attack. This means each run can potentially be 1 to 2 seconds shorter, and trust me, when you accumulate that, you can save a lot more time altogether. You likely will need Awaken Able at level 50 plus 10, like Yon He. So now that you know how to farm, I want to show you guys the results of farming. I'm currently sitting at 267 Celestial Essence. This is after 2 days of boost mode and hot time. On the first day, I did 63 rounds of boost mode with hot time and got about 120 Celestial Essence. On the second day, I did 99 rounds of boost mode with hot time and got 147 Celestial Essence. It seems that with every 100 keys, you get an average ranging from 15 to 21 Celestial Essence and 100 keys is also technically equal to around 91 rubies. Okay. So I'm sure you have even more questions about farming here. So number one, is it worth it to farm on boost mode here? If you're looking to boost your PvE capabilities, yes it is. Take note that soul shards barely drop here even though you are fighting a boss stage which means if you farm here, your soul shard acquisition will be delayed and you have to spend extra time to farm for soul shards in other areas. Which brings me to question number two. Should you farm in Territory 15 after boost mode while hot time is still active? And what happens after hot time? You can do that, but you will see that the acquisition is dragged out a lot more. So it won't feel as satisfying, but you get a heck ton of gold during the process. So that's good. But once hot time is over, get out of here because you are just wasting keys for an extremely tiny chance of Celestial Essence to drop. And this place is also extremely inefficient for ruby earning because your key cost is much higher than the ruby gain. So farming here for too long will drain your rubies instead unlike 4.5 and 5.5. Five. 
Number three, how can I get more celestial essence during my farming? There's only one trick I can give you and that is to farm with a full hero inventory. 500 out of 500. Fodder drop rate is incredible in this territory and it is so good that sometimes it becomes a bad thing because you only have 4 hours of hot time to get maximum possible amount of celestial essence. So why spend the keys here to get gold and fodder when you can do so in 8.20 and 13.5? So with a full inventory, only gold and celestial essence will drop, but take note that while doing this, you are potentially not allowing future ruby income because you will not be collecting fodder. Number 4. Should you do autocomplete for Territory 15? Hell no! <laughs> I did this on livestream and for 300 keys, I only got 6 essence. I don't think that's good at all. Someone also told me they only got about 3 or none. Okay, so since autocomplete isn't influenced by hot time and it's just regular rates, the results are not ideal. Hi, so here I am with my game. Uh, oops. We are going to try to do the... Stamping for Yonhi. Yon so we're gonna click on the speed weapon. <laughs> this is very difficult. Okay, we are at the screen. Uh, we are hoping to get a storm set. Hopefully that works out. So without further ado, we're gonna try. Oh, all blessing set. Okay, so as I mentioned before, you know, since we are trying to get a storm set, you can actually re stem the thing. Re stem this thing. So we're gonna try one try, three tries, okay? Hopefully, you get the storm set. This is an old storm. Um, I think I'll take it for now. Okay, I'll take it for now. And we have one more try, though I'm not sure if I really want to sacrifice this. I think I will since we are going for the storm. Okay, so we'll try again. This is the last try. <laughs> My game is hanging. <laughs> okay. It's an ambush set. Not exactly the best, but it's actually a it's actually a a new one, not the old one. Um so I'll take it, I'll take it. Okay. So I covered so much in this one video alone. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, do give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Big shout out to my channel members, ZMD Phoenix and Reggie Bautista for the support. Stay tuned for more videos. Thank you so much and see you.